everybody, Boondock63 here to tell you about a new cook kit that I got. It's called the Stainless Steel Bottle Cooking Kit from Self-Reliance Outfitters. So coming out of the gate, one of the best things that I like about this kit is that the kit all by itself can cover the five C's of survivability, but with some modifications, you can easily get up to the 10 C's of survivability as mentioned on the Self-Reliance Outfitters Pathfinder School uh, web, website. And um, <clears throat> David Canterbury is a big proponent of the 10 C's and the 5 C's. So uh, if you want to find out more about those, um, that's a good resource to go to. But this kit is a great core kit that you would want to build all of your backpacking experiences and all of your camping experiences or bushcrafting experiences, you'd want to build those things around this core kit. This is a robust kit. This is not a kit for ultralight backpackers. This is a tough kit, a robust kit, a strong kit. And this is a kit that's made to last. Stay tuned and we'll talk a little bit more about this kit plus the modifications that I've made to it to get to the 10 C's and more in just a minute. So let's talk about just the kit. Let's talk about the specifications. First of all, the kit, I, I've already got a couple of my mods on here already, but the kit itself, the actual container of the kit is just this round cylindrical uh, it's, it's actually a condor type kit that uh, at the Pathfinder School used to use for this, for this kit. But they've, they've uh, improved this kit and made it bigger. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about why here shortly. But this kit includes this cylindrical brown kit by itself here. <clears throat> we'll talk more about the kit itself. A 32 ounce stainless steel water bottle. A... 700 ml stainless steel cook pot with a lid, a alcohol stove, or you can use this on a wood coal, uh, a wood fire uh, stove to cook on top of. It has a bale for both the water bottle and the cook or, and the uh, cooking pot. The cook kit comes with uh, some flatware, a knife, fork, spoon. I swap that out for a spork, just for space saving and weight saving. Um, also comes with a ferrocerium rod, This is very handy. Um, and what else am I missing here? Uh, it comes with, and if I can find it, ah, here it is. The uh, Mini Inferno's Fire Starter. Uh, these are very similar to like the Cotton Ball Petroleum Jelly type Fire Starter, but uh, comes with six little pads, uh, fire starting pads in this kit. And we'll talk more about this container here shortly. So that's what comes in the core of the kit. It is a awesome core kit. Oh, and also I forgot the one thing. It comes with a carrying strap also for the kit. So it's kind of like, it's not a backpack carry, it's an over the shoulder messenger bag type carry. And we'll talk more about that. This kit um, weighs about three pounds without anything, any water, anything in it. And it today on the 7th of February, 2019, it sells for $71.95 uh, US on the selfrelianceoutfitters.com. So that's where you get it, that's how much it costs, that's the core kit itself. We're going to talk a little bit about more specifics of the kit in just a minute. So let's talk about the specifics of the kit. The kit itself is mollied all around. It fits on a, uh, it has molly straps so you can put it on a, a backpack and molly it to a backpack. It has its own molly straps here so that you can molly extra attachments and pouches to it, as you see I already have. Um, I've also added an additional pouch, a molly pouch to the front of it, so that I can carry a little bit more 
a little bit more robust kit uh, for me. Uh, the, uh, uh, the cover that I wanted to put in it was bigger than um, uh, th than than what would fit in this kit. Um, so I, I just decided to put a Molly attachment to it. So uh, the kit is a nylon, very, very um, strong nylon, kind of almost canvas-like material. Uh, very strong, uh, I would say military grade. And as most of you know, I was in the military for quite a long time. Um, the zippers on it are, are really not, they're not cheap. They're very good zippers. They move freely and easily. The D-rings on it are plastic. Um, not a huge fan of plastic, but until they break, they're fine, right? Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. And um, there's a, a, a little hole in the bottom of the kit. Just in case you spill something in it, it can leak out. So the kit is, it feels very durable. I've used it only once, and it carried very comfortably and uh, with, with, with the strap. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about more about the strap here shortly. But uh, again, that's a messenger bag type carry. It's not a backpack type carry. So that is the pouch that it all comes in. Let's talk about the water bottle for just a minute. Um, and really one of the selling points for me was how everything nests together um, here in, in such a beautiful little kit. So, I mean, you put all this together in that kit, and, and this all by itself for cooking and water carrying, uh, I don't know, it just, it really slides into my wheelhouse pretty nice. But you have a 32 ounce stainless steel water bottle. This is solid construction. This is not cheap stuff. A great big wide mouth so that you can fill up your water bottle easy. Um, nothing worse than a small mouth to try and fill stuff. Oh, it just takes forever. I don't like doing it. So you fill it up, you stick it on the fire. The other nice thing about this water bottle, very durable lid, very hard plastic. Um, it's got a rubber seal in there so it won't leak. And there is, you can use this water bottle over the fire, which is why I like stainless steel water bottles. This little fish bale right here in the shape of a fish is, works for both the water bottle and the cook pot. The water bottle, and you gotta be careful with this because you can, it's, it's a loaded spring, so it'll come apart and pinch you if you're not careful. But the nice thing about this is you can use this as a bale on the water bottle and it'll hold the water bottle up nicely for you or you can use it as a bale on the pot. That's why these holes are in this pot so that you can use it on your cook pot also. And take it one step further, you've got those holes on your pot. You've also got slots on the lid for the pot that will fit over the bale so that you can remove the, the bale or the, the lid without removing the bale if you want to. One thing I will say is you be really careful if you have hot liquid or hot food in this and trying to attach this bale when it's hot. Um, you, you got to be careful. You just don't want to spill something super hot on you, boiling hot water or something that's going to burn you and end your trip. So I would put this bale on before I heat anything and after and take it off after everything is cooled. This bale comes together nicely so that it doesn't have any sharp edges when it's in your kit. So um, it, it won't cut up the inside of your kit. So you saw those jagged wires. Um, that takes care of itself when you put it back together like in this fashion. Uh, so, 700 ml cook pot. The lid fits nice and tightly. It doesn't fall off, but it, you don't have to pry it off with a screwdriver either. So that lid fits nicely. There are graduations inside the pot, so you know how much water you've got. Um, the graduations begin at 16 ounces and go as high as 25 ounces. And also on the other side begins at 500 ml and goes up to 700 ml. This is a 700 ml stainless steel pot, stainless steel lid. Neat lid. 
like the D-ring on top of it right now, it stays up so that you can put your fork or stick or whatever in there and, and pull the, uh, the lid off with no problem. <clears throat> A little stove stand. This is kind of a neat stove stand. You can use your alcohol stove underneath it or you can just nestle this in the coals and cook over the top of it. You can cook over the top of it with your pot or you can cook, heat up your water, boil your water in, in your actual water bottle. So just make sure you don't have the, the lid on your water bottle when you do that because there is rubber and plastic in this lid. So be very careful with that. So that, I love the way it nests together. That was a huge selling point for me and a huge space saver. And um, that was probably the selling point for me, quite honestly. So what else came in the kit? We talked about the mini infernos a little bit. We talked about the fish bale. We talked about the ferrocerium rod, which was also came with the kit. It's about, looks like probably a three inch ferrocerium rod. And the neat thing about this is the little handle glows so that hopefully you won't lose it. Um, I'm going to put a lanyard on this so that I can put this around my neck so that after I've done using it, I can throw it around my neck so I won't lose it before I you know, put it away where it actually belongs. So, really cool kit coming out of the gate in just thought process. In practice though, you can do some neat things with this and we're gonna talk about the five C's and this kit. So the five C's are, uh, and this, the five C's come from um, Pathfinder School and Dave Canterbury is, is uh, I think the author of the five C's here and also the 10 C's, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but the five C's are a cutting tool, a combustion device, a container, cover, and cordage. So let's just go in order and talk about a cutting tool. Now, my when I go out into the woods or when I go out on a hike or hunting or camping, I am always carrying, my everyday carry in the woods is a fixed blade, robust, five inch blade knife that is about a quarter of an inch thick and this is what I carry on my belt. So I will always have a certain redundancy when it comes to cutting tools. Um, one of the uh, philosophies I like to use, especially in surviving, is two is one and one is none. And what I mean by that is if you only have one thing and you lose it or it breaks, now you have none. But if you have two things and one of them gets lost or one of them breaks, you still have one and you can still survive. So with cutting tools, I always have a redundancy. This is what I'm carrying on my belt. This also happens to have a ferrocerium rod with it. So that again is another redundancy when it comes uh, another redundancy when it comes to my combustion devices. So this is kind of a twofer right here. So I love this knife, and if you want to know about it, just message me. I'll tell you where I got it. Um, I'm, I don't sell anything here. I just talk about stuff I like, okay, and stuff that I've used and stuff that I'm happy with. So let's uh, move on to the, so that's, that's my, my carry cutting device. The device that I actually have and put in the kit is a Leatherman. This particular Leatherman is a Surge. This Surge is super heavy, super heavy. So it adds a lot of weight to that, uh, that kit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna scale that down to this knife here. This is a Victorinox Swiss Army knife and it's called a Trekker or a one-handed Trekker. The reason it's called a one-handed Trekker is you can open it with one hand. So it's kind of a neat knife. But this has a lot of the same things a Swiss Army knife, or pardon me, the, the Leatherman has on it. It's got the saw blade on it. It's got the bottle opener and some other things on it. But it's nowhere near as heavy as this Surge. So I think I'm going to switch my kit knife over to this Victorinox. But uh, the Victorinox is really my everyday carry around the house. And uh, I just really like this knife. It's... Uh, uh, but I think I'm going to get another one and keep it in the kit or just 
put this one in the kit when I go out with it. But for now, right now, I've got the, uh, the Surge, Leatherman Surge in there. So that's my cutting tools. Um, I also have a little serration kind of thing on my spork. I suppose that may cut something, but <laughs> probably not much. So uh, for combustion devices, we already talked a little bit about that. I've got a combustion a ferrocerium rod on my, my fixed blade knife. There's also one that comes with the kit, has the glow-in-the-dark handle. Um, this is about a 3-inch uh, ferrocerium rod with a striker. The striker has a water bottle on it, a water bottle opener rather, and the striker. And there are also, um, you can measure with this striker, it's got um, graduations on it for, and this is up to 50 millimeters on one side, and... This is 50 centimeters on the other, or five centimeters on the other. So it's all metric there. Anyway, that's, that's what comes with that. And the redundancy that I would have with this particular kit is just a, a Bic lighter. Um, I put the string around it underneath the little button there so that the button doesn't get pushed down and the, the fuel doesn't get lost while it's in the, the kit. So that's just a little piece of, of uh, gutted paracord there. But, so, redundancies for my cutting tools and for my combustion devices, always. Along with the combustion device that comes with the kit, it comes with these little mini Inferno uh, petroleum uh, saturated pads that will burn for, you know what, I've never used these particular pads uh, the Inferno pads, but I've used cotton balls with petroleum jelly, and they usually burn for a few minutes, and certainly long enough to get a fire started um, if, if you use this type of thing. The neat thing about this particular kit is when you've used up the stuff inside it, um, don't throw away the kit because you can put a hole in this and use this to make char cloth. So this, uh, this is metal, so this, uh, you know, it's tin, so this will work perfect for that. Or you can reuse it and make your own cotton balls with petroleum gel in it and stick those in here, however you want to do that. Um, containers. We already talked about the 32-ounce water bottle, the 70 or 700 ml uh, cooking pot, um, all stainless steel, all you can cook on uh, and, and heat up and boil water with. So the containers are good. Also a container is the... Uh, the actual pouch itself. You can use that as a container for, you know, whatever you want to carry around. If you want to go out, empty this, go out and get a bunch of kindling or tinder and just fill this up with that. You can do that and then bring it back to camp and empty it somewhere where it'll stay dry. Um, so that can be used as a container also. <coughs> Cover. Let's talk about cover. Cover was a difficulty with the five C's on this because more cover is better. Less cover is less better, less good. So um, here's what I've done. I have the Mylar uh, emergency blanket. That um, is just a good thing to have for both a blanket, for ground cover, for overhead cover. This particular one is... Um, Five, 55 inches by 84 inches. So this is sizable. It's good. It's it's pretty big. Um, it stretches out, but how durable is it? So what I have is a, uh, this is just a nylon tarp, and this is five feet by seven feet. Um, and this has grommets in it so that I can put this up as a cover or a ground sheet, whichever I choose, one or the other. And I also have, um, <clears throat> some some cordage, which we'll go on and talk more about cordage in a little bit. But I also have some cordage so that I can secure that tarp and get covered up with it and stay safe. So again, the five C's, the first five C's that should be the core of every kit, every survival kit, are cutting tools, combustion devices, containers, cover, and cordage. So, um, Cordage is the last of the five C's, and let's talk about that. I've got a lot of cordage. You, uh, you can't have too much, but you want to be reasonably, uh, it's got to fit in your kit reasonably. So I've got 50 feet of paracord. And as you all know, 
paracord can be gutted and you've got the seven strands of the white the white uh, string inside the paracord that you can use for a ton of different things whether it be setting snares or sewing up your clothes or whatever whatever I mean probably one of those strands inside a, a paracord rope would would probably secure that small tarp probably would doesn't take much and it would definitely secure that my, the the mylar blanket because it's so light it doesn't really take much so 50 uh, 50 feet there of paracord this is 250 cord or 220 cord I can't remember which but this I actually have to put in my um, my my tarp kit so that I can tie down the tarp that's why I have this that's the purpose of this or whatever else I want to use it for um, so that's that's the the cordage there in, in traditional rope that I have I also have um, gorilla tape uh, this is small one inch uh, gorilla tape that fits in the kit very nicely and um, this can be used for j just the sky's the limit on this but uh, you know duct tape you can use it for everything and a man can't be without it and this can be used for cordage also so I have a roll of duct tape I don't recall how long this roll is but I'm sure, pretty sure it's going to last longer than I, I uh, it'll be longer than I need it to be uh, on the short trips that I would take this kit on. Hopefully short trips. So those are the five C's, cutting tool, combustion container, cover, and cordage. Those are the five C's. They fit in this kit very nicely. Now we're going to move on, and with modifications, we're going to... Um, move up to the 10 C's with this kit with very slight modifications and I'll show you in a minute. So now I've modified this kit just a little bit just to accommodate a little bit more space um, so that I could make it a little bit more robust and a little more dependable. So I added this pouch and it's not very big but I added this pouch to the front of it with the molly straps. I've added my compass pouch on this side and my Leatherman pouch on this side just to create a little bit more room for other stuff so that I could get to the 10 C's of survivability. So the 10 C's, I've already talked about the first five which are cutting tools, combustion devices, containers, cover and cordage. Now we're gonna move on from that and the first thing beyond the fifth C is gonna be number six and it's going to be cotton bandanas. So cotton bandanas. You see I have one here, and I have one actually wrapped up in the strap of the carrying case right here, and you can see that there. I've just got that kind of wrapped around there. That just gives me a little extra padding and gave me a place to stick that extra bandana. So I've got redundancies there, and then I've got two. So one of them you're always gonna use for wiping stuff up, cleaning stuff off, whether it be yourself or maybe your cook kits. But the other one you may decide to use for all kinds of different things, whether it be a bandage or a sling, or maybe some char cloth, or maybe you want to uh, clean some water, debride some water with it, and you know, get out big particles of water, uh, you know, in your water, so you can sift it through your, your cotton bandana first. There's, there's just really an unlimited uh, number of things that you can do it with, with a cotton bandana when you're out in the bush. But uh, good to have and good to have redundancies of. And make sure they're cotton because uh, if you do want to make char cloth, there you go, you've got it. <clears throat> and if you had to make char cloth out in the bush, you could use this container for it and you can just pop a hole in the top of it with your knife and uh, you can make your char cloth really simple and you could make a whole lot of char cloth with one bandana. The next thing is cargo tape. We already talked about it. This is um, not only is it cor double as cordage, but it doubles as all kinds of stuff. You can use this also as like a sling. You can use it to repair holes in your tarp or holes in your clothes. You can make shoes out of it. I saw a video once where a guy had a ton of, of duct tape and he made a boat out of duct tape. So you can use duct tape or cargo tape uh, or out of anything. This is good stuff to have. This particular brand is Gorilla Tape and uh, I got it because it comes in the one inch. I didn't need a big fat, you know, two inch roll of duct tape. So I got this one. 
for that. The other thing for the 10 C's is the cloth needle, uh, sail needle. I've got two needles and they're just kind of wrapped up in this duct tape here so that it, it doesn't stick into something. I've got the curved needle for uh, sewing uh, like canvas type things or tarps or stuff like that. And I've got a straight needle. Now these are big long needles. This, this needle that's in here is probably three inches long. And it will accommodate, the, the eye and the needle will accommodate the white string inside my paracord and I checked to make sure that that, that would accommodate that. So if you got a needle, you gotta have some thread. So the thread, is right here, okay? So I've got the, the uh, cloth sail needle. Candling devices. Um, I have redundancies in my candling devices. My candling devices, or my lights, are battery operated. So I've got the headlamp. I like headlamps because I like hand-free. But it's got a AA battery in it, okay? AA batteries die after a while. So I've got an extra battery. So you want to have, if you've got any devices that require batteries, you're going to, you're going to want to make sure you've got extra just in case because you don't want to be caught without it. So I've got the headlamp, and if that fails, I've got a small flashlight right here. Very small, also takes one AA battery, and I've got two extras with me just in case I have to have them. So redundancies with my candling device always have two. And the last thing to get this uh, kit up to the 10 C's is going to be my compass. I like to carry the, this was issued to me in the military, it's a lensatic compass. I learned how to use compasses on this type of compass and um, this is the one I'm comfortable with. There's tons of them out there. This tends to be a little bit more expensive than you really need, but um, there's tons of compasses out there. I know, um, is it Suntu, S-U-U-N-T-O, makes some good compasses out there, some quality compasses, and uh, th th that's, a, the, that's a good brand out there that's not quite as expensive as, as this particular type. Um, you don't need to have a super expensive compass. You just need one that works and one that you know how to use. If you don't, how to, don't know how to use a compass, there's really no need to bring it with you. It's not gonna help you very much. So if you're gonna carry, to carry a compass, make sure you know how to use it so you can get yourself out of trouble if you need to. So, let's review a little bit. This kit coming out of the gate is a great robust kit. It is not ultralight. This is a heavy duty kit. It is heavy. Uh, it's three pounds with the kit as pictured in, in the, on the web page. It's three pounds empty. Okay, so it's, it's kind of heavy. And when you start putting all this other stuff in it, it's really heavy. One of the things, one of the last things I'll talk about is stoves. I personally like an alcohol stove. This is from Alox. This is a cheap alcohol stove. I paid, I think, less than 20 bucks for this a long time ago, and it works great. This is a, a wonderful stove, and I, I, I continue to use this frequently uh, when I go out into the woods. <clears throat> These two little bottles of nasal spray are actually denatured alcohol. Um, I filled these up. These hold a little over two ounces a piece. The reason I use these bottles is because they don't leak, they can fit into my kit, and one of them, if it's super cold out, um, I can put into my pocket. And uh, the reason I would put it into my pocket is because liquid fuels do not vaporize well when it's super cold out, and it is the vapors that burn. So um, once you get it started, it's fine because the heat will keep it warm the fire will actually keep it warm. So it's at that point, it's self-heating. But if it's super ice cold, you're not gonna be able to get this to light until you warm it up. So I have a bottle that's small enough to just stick in my shirt pocket and keep up against my body and uh, keep that warm. Um, so the alcohol stove will fit under this little stove stand very nicely. And um, you can just either put your pot on it 
or your water on it, and it works fantastic. So, so we've talked about the kit from Self-Reliance Outfitters. It is a great kit coming out of the gate. You can get to the 5Cs super easy with just the kit. With a couple of modifications, you can get to the 10Cs very comfortably in this small kit. <coughs> For 71 bucks plus some of the modifications, which you probably already have at home, um, you can make this one heck of a kit. So, do I recommend this kit? So far, yes. I've used it once and I've used it successfully. I'm going to use this exclusively for cooking uh, when I go out backpacking this summer, and I'm going to put it through it, put it through its paces both with the alcohol stove and in a fire pit. So we're going to use this for every use that I can find to use it for this summer. So stay tuned for more, and uh, we'll be back. I am Boondock 63, and if you're not going outside and making some memories, you probably need to get started. Nobody's promised tomorrow. Take care.